bien convaincu. Et puis, il y avait un cousin de la maman qui savait que je pense qu'il m'envoyait une autre de ses 15 avec une preuve. C'est marrant, hein. C'était visuel comme argument. and one is obtained from the other by, by an automorphism of, uh, of the field of algebraic numbers, then any <coughs> set of algebraic statements about uh, ingredients of one object remain true for the second object. So <coughs> in the opposite direction, if you, uh, if you are able to state something which is true for one and false <coughs> for for the other object, uh, then they belong to different Galois orbits. So this is our leading principle. Why I hold that? Uh, why I hold that it is an old, new approach? Because <coughs> I was excited to know in, in a talk by Jean-Pierre Amis <coughs> that this approach was, in fact, the initial approach by Galois lui-même, lui himself. Sorry. <laughs> So, an example I uh, gave here <coughs> is an example of a Billy function which decomposes, which is a composition of smaller Billy functions. Here is a function of degree 4 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, <coughs> uh, 4 time eight, uh, times 8, uh, which is a composition of two functions, one of them of uh, degree 4 and the other one of degree 8. <coughs> so if a function is a composition and another function with, with the same set of degrees of faces, vertices and so on is not a composition, then certainly they belong to different Galois orbits. <coughs> now, a ramified covering is a composition if and only if the monodromic group is in primitive. The primitive means that <coughs> the set of points on which uh, uh, the group acts <coughs> can be subdivided in blocks of equal size <coughs> and the action of every permutation <coughs> moves a block entirely to a block. So the group acts in the following manner, it permutes <coughs> points inside blocks and permutes blocks <coughs> themselves. Okay, so this is if and only if. And there are not many primitive groups. <coughs> so, <coughs> for example, for the groups of degree 12, there are 301 transitive groups and only six of them are primitive. 
uh, for example, for 32, the <coughs> in the paper I, I read, uh, the number <coughs> was uh, not determined. There are certainly more than uh, 150,000 transitive permutation groups, <coughs> but only five trinity. Okay, if the degree is <coughs> prime, then implementing groups cannot exist, but there are not much many groups either. For example, for 23, there are only seven <coughs> permutation groups. <coughs> for 13, there are only nine permutation groups. Uh, <coughs> nine is already not, not a too small number. It is because 13, uh, there are uh, projective <coughs> Uh, spaces with uh, 13 points. Okay, <coughs> so <coughs> there was a conjecture with, which was proved that the number of primitive groups which admit a planar presentation is finite, <coughs> but they are not classified. Uh, which admit a planar presentation, which <coughs> correspond, which are cartographic group <coughs> of uh, of planar maps. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, some particular cases are classified, but not, not all of them. But anyway, the most often we get uh, either symmetric group or <coughs> alternating group. Well, <coughs> an automorphism group is a Galois invariant because <coughs> the fact that to have an automorphism means a composition. If <coughs> there is a group with the same symmetries as the icosahedron, for example. In a way, this means that it is drawn on the icosahedron. You may imagine some map, you may imagine icosahedron and a map which is drawn on it. Okay, so then you <coughs> apply the belly function of the icosahedron and you get a smaller map, a much smaller map. And for this smaller map, you you take, <coughs> you find the belly function and you apply and, and you get a composition. Okay, so this is an explanation why the automorphism group is a Galois invariant. Uh, the cartographic group is a Galois invariant also since <coughs> there exists, uh, uh, since <coughs> there exists a covering uh, of, of a map with a <coughs> regular map, with a, so if there is a map with a cartographic group G, then it is a quotient of a map having the automorphism group G. So it is there. There exists a composition of first <coughs> this covering and then another uh, another <coughs> function. Well, <coughs> let us consider the duality for. B-colored maps, <coughs> the duality, uh, we, we take the duality only between faces and black vertices. So two maps, the initial one and the dual one, <coughs> share their white, white vertices. Inside each, uh, inside each face there is <coughs> a new vertex of the degree equal to the degree of the vertex. Inside each <coughs> new face, there is a vertex, which <coughs> a black vertex whose degree is equal to the degree of the blue <coughs> face, uh, and uh, the edges go to white vertices and then from white to black like that. So <coughs> the belly function uh, for a dual map is just one divided by the belly function uh, of initial map. Well divided by this function, so <coughs> uh, the zeros are, are sent to infinity. The infinity, uh, <coughs> the value infinity is sent to zero, and one remains invariant. <coughs> so, <coughs> if the map is self-dual. It, it doesn't mean that f is equ equal to 1 over f, since to be self-dual means that it is not the same map. It, is, it means that the dual map is isomorphic uh, to the initial one. So <coughs> uh, 
there is a linear fractional transformation such that f of this gamma of x is equal to 1 over x. And this is a statement of our language, of our Galois language. There exists something that something is true. So if it is true for, <coughs> for one object and not true for the, uh, for the other one, then they belong to different Galois orbits. If you are interested, interested to draw the map and its dual together on the same picture, then it means just to apply the composition, uh, so to, to apply to f this quadratic uh, rational function. You see <coughs> zeros of f go to zero, uh, poles of f if you take infinity, so here the degree is 2 and here the degree is 1, so <coughs> poles go to zeros. Uh, and if f is equal to 1, then you get 4 here and 4 here, so 1 <coughs> goes to 1. Well, now suppose that the map is both symmetric and self-dual. Then, if we draw two maps together, the map itself and its dual, the group symmetry becomes, the automorphism group becomes twice as big. And we will <coughs> serve this property here. So, <coughs> here is uh, one of my favorite examples. Uh, you see, I work in Bordeaux uh, in, a, in a group of enumerative combinatorics, and often I tease my colleagues by the fact that they consider there is a huge science of map enumeration with many remarkable results. But they treat maps as <coughs> fishermen treat fish. Uh, uh, there are no distinguish, uh, they do not distinguish between individuals. There is just a big set of non-distinguishable objects. <coughs> the approach of the Saint-Enfant is to treat maps <coughs> personally, in a way, yes. This famous story about Hardy, uh, which said about Ramanujan that every natural number is his personal friend. I, I try to, to move in the same steps. So not every map is my personal friend, but at least some of them. <coughs> These are <coughs> my very favorite maps. This example belongs to Folimonian. Philemonia and Shabbat. So <coughs> here is a family of five maps with the set of with the following set of degrees for the black vertices 5, 5, 1, 1, for the faces 5, 5, 1, 1, and all white vertices are not drawn because all of them are degree 2. What can we say uh, uh, concerning the Galois action on this set of maps? Uh, first observation, they are all, all five are self-dual. So this is an interesting information, but it <coughs> doesn't give us a possibility to distinguish between them. Second observation, <coughs> the maps A, B, and C <coughs> are symmetric with the symmetry of order two. You can, you can imagine the, them <coughs> drawn on the sphere and rotate the sphere. 180 degrees and we obtain uh, according to two poles and we obtain the same map. So <coughs> these three maps uh, are separated from these two which are not, which do not have uh, uh, such an automorphism. Now <coughs> let us try, let us try to draw <coughs> the maps A and B together with their duals. Here is the map A <coughs> uh, together with its dual, the map B together with its dual. So the group of automorphisms becomes twice bigger, but in this case, the group instead of C2, instead of cyclic group C2 becomes cyclic group C4, and here the group instead of C2 becomes a Kleinian <coughs> group V4. 
So this property separates separates <coughs> two sets, and now we see that <coughs> this map forms an orbit in itself, and these two maps <coughs> are separated from the <coughs> from the previous one. And in fact, it is obvious that they form a quadratic orbit over a quadratic imaginary field. Imaginary because if we apply the con complex conjugation to one of them, we obtain the other one. And the complex conjugation is in fact the only element of the Galois group, of the big Galois group, group of automorphisms of algebraic numbers, the only element that, which is known explicitly. Very interesting book, but not much known explicitly, explicitly about this one. Okay, <coughs> there remain uh, these two maps, D and E. <coughs> uh, <coughs> it is not easy to determine what takes place if, <coughs> if uh, it is a single orbit of two elements defined over a quadratic field or it, it is two uh, <coughs> orbits both defined of the field of rational numbers over Q. <coughs> but in both cases, so I cannot say just looking at picture uh, without computer, without computing, <coughs> I cannot say if it is a single orbit or it is two orbits, two separate orbits. But in any case, if <coughs> it is quadratic orbit, it is an orbit over, <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, this, is, this concerns uh, the upper orbit. <coughs> uh, it is <coughs> a real quadratic field because the complex conjugation does not send the map E to G, but it sends E to itself. So either this map is defined over Q and also this one, or they both defined over a <coughs> real quadratic field. But <coughs> the, map, uh, <coughs> the map D cannot be uh, positioned on the complex plane or complex sphere in such a way as <coughs> uh, uh, in a way symmetric uh, <coughs> with respect to the real axis. The conclusion, the belly function for this map cannot be realized with a coefficient belonging to its, <coughs> to the corresponding, to, to its field of moduli. And it was a, s s not a shock, but, but a <coughs> uh, bad news at, uh, at some point, many years ago, ago already. <coughs> so, there is a number field attached to, to this map, but Bailey function cannot be realized with the coefficients in this, uh, in this field. You need to extend this field <coughs> further to get Bailey functions. So now, <coughs> applying the computer, we find the following. This orbit is indeed defined over an imaginary quadratic field. These two descents form <coughs> a unique Galois orbit. The field in question is Q of square root of 5, but it is impossible to realize the building functions for these maps in this field. We need to, to, to make an extension by square root of minus 2. Now, square root of 5 is an objective characteristic. Uh, replacing square root of 5 by minus square root of 5 <coughs> uh, makes e to d, sends e to d and d to e. And it is impossible to change it. So, it, uh, whatever are uh, your computations, you, all, you will always get square root of 5. <coughs> uh, square root of minus 2, uh, if you exchange it with its minus, it sends <coughs> a map in this orbit to itself, but only positioned differently on the complex plane. 
and there are different possibilities to make such an extension. For example, the, <coughs> uh, the primitive root of degree 5 <coughs> of unity also, uh, also fit uh, to this job. And concerning groups, <coughs> the, the cartographic group, group of this map is A5. Of these two, <coughs> Uh, it is quite a fancy group, a brief product of these two groups intersected with A12, and for remaining two, it is PSA 211. Uh, we will meet the map A, <coughs> and the whole family, we will meet, meet them once again in the future. <coughs> so, uh, the cartographic group uh, sometimes <coughs> uh, uh, provides uh, us with, uh, with an information which would be very difficult to, to obtain in the other way. <coughs> so let us fix <coughs> the set of degrees corresponding to these traits. Red vertices, 8 times 2, one, uh, 7 times 1. White vertices, 4 times 4, 2 times 2, and 3 times 1. Okay? <coughs> so there are, uh, there are 60,060 trees with this set of degrees. For four of them, for these two, and for mirror symmet symmetric images, the cartographic group is the material group M23. For all the other, <coughs> uh, the cartographic group is uh, A23, alternating group. So, <coughs> if uh, we try to solve the system of algebraic equations of degree 60,060, uh, it will certainly be impossible. But we can predict we can predict <coughs> that, uh, that uh, the system splits the resulting polynomial <coughs> of this degree, which we cannot compute, and even if we computed it, it would be impossible to, to, to look at it. So just imagine a book with, with an enormous polynomial. We can predict that it, <coughs> uh, it, factorize, it, it, it factorizes in at least two polynomials, one of degree 4 and the other one of degree 60,056. Okay. <coughs> so an interesting question is if it is possible, however, to find uh, Billy functions, Shabbat polynomials, uh, in this case, because we can work with trees. Four, four maps <coughs> with the uh, go M23. It is indeed possible, but <coughs> with a very uh, subtle procedure. <coughs> so first of all, uh, people, <coughs> uh, people find an approximation to, uh, to this polynomial, <coughs> to these polynomials, <coughs> with <coughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> approximations uh, with a very, very high precision. For example, with, with 4,000 digits <coughs> after, after, after uh, the decimal point. And then uh, by the algorithm which is called LLL uh, because of uh, its authors, Lenstra, Lenstra, and Lovash. <coughs> uh, it is possible to guess uh, the, corresponding, uh, the corresponding field to which uh, the coefficients belong. So <coughs> this computation was carried out by Yuri Matiasevich. <coughs> and <coughs> in the character table of this group, there is uh, a quadratic point of the square root of minus 23. And some general theory predicts that this root should belong to the 
to the field of, of corresponding coefficients, which is indeed the case. So the field is of degree 4, because there are 4 trees. It cannot be quadratic, but it can. <coughs> uh, uh, <coughs> but this quadratic root belongs to this field. Well, <coughs> it's time to, to start uh, to speak <coughs> a little bit about, about Billy pairs, so non-planar case. In non-planar case, you should, you, we, we must consider not a Billy function, but a Billy pair. It is due to the fact that <coughs> there are infinitely many uh, different Riemann surfaces of the same genus. For example, for <coughs> the genus 1, there is topologically, there is only one torus, but from the point of view of Riemann surfaces or of algebraic curves, there are infinitely many uh, algebraic curves, non-isomorphic <coughs> non to each other, which are called uh, elliptic curves. Okay, it is not here to explain all that. <coughs> So, we need a Riemann surface and a <coughs> neuromorphic function on this surface, which has at most three critical values, 0, 1, and infinity. Okay, then the map itself <coughs> can be obtained as the pre-image of the segment <coughs> 0, 1. Uh, so, <coughs> in general, there are at least two ways to represent to represent <coughs> Riemann surfaces. So, as an algebraic curve, it is <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> this. This is just an illustration of what what I, I told previously. <coughs> so, what data? do we need in order to represent a Riemann surface as an unsheeted ramified covering of the complex sphere? In general. In general, we need <coughs> the following data. K ramification points, critical values, and K permutations will generate <coughs> the monodromy when we go <coughs> around a critical value on the low level, <coughs> Then the, these permutations show how we go around the sheets <coughs> of the Riemann surface above. What are the conditions on this data? There are no conditions at all on the <coughs> ramification points. They <coughs> may be arbitrary. <coughs> the permutations must <coughs> act transitively on the sheets if we want to get the connected Riemann surface. And their product should be equal to 1, because if we go around all ramification points, uh, uh, the, this loop can be contracted. <coughs> now, the famous and very profound Riemann's existence theorem it says that <coughs> uh, for, the, for such data, there exists a Riemann surface and, and, and she is covering meromorphic function with the above ramification <coughs> data. And this pair is unique up to an automorphism, up, up to two automorphisms of X and of X and of, of the sphere. Now <coughs> the Riemann sphere, the Riemann surfaces have a <coughs> few automorphisms, but the Riemann sphere has a set <coughs> of automorphisms which is rather large. Uh, it is <coughs> the group of fractional linear transformations. And with them, we can choose <coughs> three uh, ramification points. For example, the three <coughs> last ones, k minus 2, k y k minus 1, and y k, and put them in three fixed points. For example, 0, 1, and infinity. Then what remains <coughs> is <coughs> k permutations <coughs> with their product equal to 1, so you may consider that there are k minus 1 permutations, <coughs> and k minus 3 continuous parameters. So discrete data and continuous data. Continuous data can be <coughs> changed uh, gradually uh, 
uh, a little bit to epsilon and so on. Uh, <coughs> discrete data cannot be changed, uh, so they can be changed, but but only in discrete way. They are rigid. So the, now the main question is, what if k is equal to three? If k is equal to, to, to 3, then the continuous parameters dis disappear entirely. What remains is only the triple of permutations. And the triple of permutations cannot be changed continuously. The situation becomes rigid. Rigid <coughs> means, among other things, that the complex structure of the <coughs> surface is fixed and cannot be moved. <coughs> So the structure of the algebraic curve is also fixed. And it is our situation, three ramification points, mean three critical values, three permutations I denoted previously by sigma, alpha, and phi, their product was equal to one. <coughs> and the question which remains is if it is possible to represent any Riemann surface in this way, <coughs> the answer is very positive. The answer is no, <coughs> and it is extremely posit positive answer because of Bailey theorem. A Riemann surface <coughs> uh, has a meromorphic function with at most three critical values if and only if it is defined over the field of algebraic numbers. Okay, and here is a citation uh, from a manuscript by Gordon Dick. I'll leave you one minute to read it. <coughs> so, <coughs> So beside the <coughs> definition of the circle, which he learned at early age, this is the most profound <coughs> uh, and strong mathematical impression of his whole career as a mathematician. <coughs> so <coughs> a philosophical regression. So. <coughs> Uh, a very simple structure, triple of permutations acting transitively with their product equal to 1, or if you prefer uh, a pair of permutations acting transitively, uh, give us ex um, an, uh, extremely many different interesting structures. First of all, maps. <coughs> Uh, and people study maps, uh, they enumerate them, they, they construct <coughs> symmetric maps, uh, they construct embeddings of specific graphs, and so on. <coughs> Riemann surfaces with all which would go, go uh, <coughs> together with them. Complex structure, algebraic curves, ramified, co ramified coverings, formula spaces, and so on. Number fields, Galois <coughs> theory, and other applications like the plot status <coughs> bound, which I showed yesterday. Uh, and all this is interrelated. Okay, so <coughs> now an example. Yesterday uh, I showed an example when <coughs> it is uh, interesting to draw instead of computing. Now an example when it is interesting to compute instead of drawing. <coughs> so let us consider uh, the following algebraic curve. Xn plus Yn is equal to 1. <coughs> All in the projective coordinates, Xn plus Yn is equal to Zn. <coughs> Fermat curve. So I would like to construct a Billy function on this surface. First of all, <coughs> I take the projection. xy goes to x. What are the critical values of this projection? It is 
that's rather easy to determine. Now I write <coughs> my equation in this form, yn is equal to <coughs> 1 minus xn. So critical values are those values x is fixed, and critical values are those values of x for which there are less than n solutions of this equation. So the only case is <coughs> when, uh, uh, when 1 minus x to the power n is 0. And so uh, the <coughs> roots, the nth roots of uni unity <coughs> are critical values. Critical values are n nth roots of unity. Okay. So this is an explanation <coughs> why infinity is not a critical value, but maybe Maybe I skip this part. <coughs> uh, uh, well, <coughs> it is important to, to remark maybe that in the <coughs> projective coordinates, so in any case, if we consider coordinates x, y, then the projection means just forgetting y. In projective coordinates, it's the same, only <coughs> uh, this. Uh, operation is not defined if x is equal to 0 and z is equal to 0 and y is not 0. But this point does not belong to the Fermat curve, so we are happy <coughs> with that. Uh, uh, okay. <coughs> then uh, we see that when z is equal to 1, our equation for y with fixed x there's <coughs> n solutions. Now, <coughs> let us apply the function x to xn. It sends all roots of unity to 1, and it creates two new critical values, 0 and infinity. Therefore, the composition of these two functions, if we take <coughs> x by first to x and then to x to the power n, is a Billy function. Yes. Can we determine all the functions in terms of uh, f? The same uh, I don't think so. I, I don't know. Maybe there are there are other ones on on this surface, but I, I don't know. Of. In in general, <coughs> uh, uh, there was a question. <coughs> If it is possible to construct a Riemann surface with two significantly different descents on this surface, it seems that the answer is so. Everybody believed that it is possible, but there were, there were no concrete examples. It seems that now there are concrete examples, if I understand correctly the corresponding papers. So you can always compose. Uh, yes, yes. <coughs> but so but there, there are some trivial examples that define it, let's say. Uh, yes, uh, 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 yes. To, to, to make a composition is always possible, but but to make something else, I don't know. If if uh, does there exist a belly function of the surface which is not which is not equivalent to the previous one? Mm -hmm in a significant way. I don't know. Okay, so I found one critical <coughs> one Billy function. It is of degree n square because the projection is of degree n and the function itself f is of degree n. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so uh, <coughs> How it works for for a generic point, <coughs> uh, the function x to the power n gives n pre-images, and each pre-image <coughs> gives n uh, uh, pre-images <coughs> under the projection. So in total, n square pre-images. For zero, <coughs> uh, the function x to the power n gives one pre-image which is multiple of multiplicity n, 
and <coughs> the projection gives uh, n different pre-images, all of multiplicity n. The same thing for infinity. Now for one, it is slightly different. <coughs> uh, it is critical value of uh, it is not critical value of x to the power n, so first we get n different points, and then each point gives only one pre-image of multiplicity n. So finally, all these points, there are n points here, n points here, n points here, and they are all of multiplicity n. It is interesting to take the pre-image <coughs> of uh, not of the segment 0, 1, but of the whole <coughs> real axis. Uh, it is a triangle. 0, 1 is one side, 1 infinity is the other side, and infinity to 0, the third side. <coughs> what is the pre-image of, of this triangulation of the sphere? First of all, it will be a triangulation, because there, are, there is no <coughs> no critical values inside the triangle, so each triangle becomes a triangle. Uh, three edges in the image, three n square edges in the pre-image. Two faces in the image, two n square faces in the pre-image. Every time it is multiplied by, <coughs> by n square. Three vertices in the image, only three n vertices in the pre-image, but all of them are of degree 2n. Because on the uh, low level they were of multiplicity 2. <coughs> so, the graph in question is the complete tripartite graph. <coughs> this means that there are uh, three sets of uh, vertices, n vertices, of one type and vertices, of the other type and n vertices of the third type, <coughs> and every yeah. vertex of each type is connected to all vertices of two other types. The genus can be computed because we know the <coughs> numbers of vertices, edges, and faces, and the embedding is a triangulation, and therefore it is the embedding of the least possible genus. Just <coughs> the faces are the smallest possible, therefore the number is the <coughs> biggest possible, therefore the <coughs> uh, since uh, the number of faces uh, is uh, plus number of faces is 2 minus 2g, two the g is the smallest possible. So it is the embedding of this graph of the least possible genus. Now just imagine a combinatorial or geometric problem. <coughs> you have uh, uh, a graph K N N N with three N vertices of <coughs> three different types, complete, which means that every vertex is related, is connected to all two n vertices of two other types, <coughs> and you look for an embedding of the minimal genus, minimum genus. Not, not an easy question at all, isn't it? <coughs> there were two papers, uh, in 79 and 70, <coughs> which showed that the minimum genus is exactly what we get. Uh, but the relation of the combinatorial problem to Fermat equation were, uh, of course, not, not, not at all apparent to the authors of these papers. <coughs> now, just to generalize a little bit, <coughs> I consider the Fermat equation in this form x to the power n and y minus 1 minus 1 to the power n. And I remark that <coughs> both here is a function of x, here is a function of y, and they are both very simple but still belly functions. 
they correspond to, to the star tree. Only black and white are interchanged. Now let us consider <coughs> a curve with the, <coughs> uh, uh, with the equation f of x equal to g of y, where f and g are belly functions. Then uh, I affirm that f of x and of course g of y are belly functions on this surface of degree m n, where when degree of f is m, degree of g is n. Why so? <coughs> it is because <coughs> if we take if we take any number different from 0, 1 and infinity, then the equation f of x equal to t has m distinct solutions. g of y equal to t has n distinct solutions. So there are mn pairs x, y, and x. No, no, no multiple points. The multiple points <coughs> only, only uh, arrive when <coughs> t is equal either to 0 or to 1 or to infinity. So, an example, I just, a random example, I took two trees and in purely combinatorial way, I can, uh, so the surface is f of x equal to g of y. Uh, it is a surface of genus 5, a Billy function of the 56, 11 black vertices, white vertices, their degrees, and one face of degree 56. In uh, a clear example, <coughs> we take two Billy functions, one for example for the icosahedron and g for the cube. We get a surface of genus 253 with <coughs> Uh, it is uh, with <coughs> 96 black vertices all of degree 15, with white vertices all of degree 2, with all faces of degree 12. <coughs> well, uh, uh, it was yesterday evening that I thought that maybe it, it would be interesting to find out the automorphism group. <coughs> but, uh, For the moment, I don't know it. I presume that it is the direct product of the two groups, but, but maybe it is its subgroup or something else. <coughs> I don't know any interesting applications to this construction, but, <coughs> but I'm sure that they should exist. OK, so <coughs> I stop here, and what remains is to construct the Billy pair for the icosahedron of genus 4, about which I spoke on the first <coughs> lecture. So, if you remember, there, there, is, there exists a very regular embedding of the icosahedron <coughs> uh, onto the surface, into the surface of genus 4, and I will construct the Billy function corresponding to this picture. Thank you. Was the goal of what I, I had, I mean, he wanted to understand the, the absolute, absolute Galois group using such action. Uh, so, what's the status about that? So, people uh, say that uh, often, often call this theory the Grotendieck's theory of descent d'enfant. Mm -hmm. uh, According to my knowledge, the only <coughs> role of Grotendieck here is the remark I cited, which attracted much attention to this, to this theory. Mm -hmm. It seems that uh, it, it did nothing else about it. Mm -hmm. 
Probably, probably a mistake. Is he direct a thesis or the Dagaiiri? And the Dagaiiri was the classification of all. Uh, graphs on the surface mm -hmm. up to isotope, up to homeomorphous or congruence. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the idea of this, and it's coupled by the group of here, mm -hmm. in that in related work, the Pierre Dampus mm -hmm. thesis, and the idea was to have a combinatorial group of the Nielsen realization problem. Of, of the what? The Nielsen realization ah, problem. Yes. Surfaces, mm -hmm. homotopics, they find out in many photomorphics. Mm -hmm. uh, those can be realized dramatically. Okay. So this is <coughs> pre to this kind of considerations, mm -hmm. but arithmetic did not show up mm -hmm. in that previous work. Mm -hmm. I see. So I didn't know about that. But the Gregory also knew that um, this is a farm for a little um algebra curve the final of the bar, right? Uh, yes, he wrote, he wrote that it is defined over Q bar and that <coughs> uh, uh, that a, a child drawing uh, uh, something on the piece of paper <coughs> uh, produces uh, an extension of Q uh, uh, and, uh, <coughs> and if, if we change a little bit this picture <coughs> We, if we remove one edge, we obtain something uh, completely different. Uh, but all these are just remarks. Um, no theorems, no. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Can any belly curve be written in this form f of x equal to g of y, even though f and g they are not bad in them? Uh, or is, are this case very special? Uh, it, it seems that yes. Uh, sorry, <coughs> not not any algebraic curve can be represented in this way. Uh, but uh, it seems that you ask two questions in one. <coughs> uh, if all algebraic curve can be represented in this way, I I think that not. I'm pretty sure that not. Uh, now, if instead of planar belly functions, I take non planar ones, I think that a similar construction could be made. And <coughs> probably the most interesting case is to take, to take a Galois orbit, for example, five MIPS, which constitute a single Galois orbit, to take the corresponding five belly functions, which are the same function but not with slightly different coefficients, and to write f1 of x equal to f2 of y equal to f3 of z equal to f4 of t, and so on. So there will be a unique surface in, <coughs> uh, in a space of higher dimensions which should project to every one of them. Probably this construction will give, will give something interesting. Maybe we should do another lunch.